Hello everyone, this is Seth with World of Paleoanthropology, and today we're going to be doing an episode of Skulls with Seth. I know it's been a little bit, so I'm excited to do this episode, and we're going to be looking at someone who's quite famous that I think a lot of us can learn a lot from who don't know of him, uh, but let's dig right in. So, we are going to be talking about Narakatomi Boy. Narakatomi is, in the language of where he was found, also known as Turkana Boy because of Lake Turkana. He was found on the west bank of Turkana in Kenya in 1984 by Kamoya Kimu who unfortunately passed away recently, and I do have a article and podcast about him, and I sincerely suggest you read and watch or listen to it, because it is about him and his life, and he was one of the greatest fossil hunters of hominins that we've ever known. Very dedicated man, and he will be dearly missed. But... While this was one of his finds, and possibly his most famous finds, it was definitely not the only hominin he found. But the age of Turkana Boy is about 1.6 million years old, which places it in around a time where there are multiple hominins living at the same time. But this one is Homo erectus also known as Homo ergaster. Um, and sometimes it changes if it's this. There's so much to talk about with this species. So this video might be a little bit longer than a regular Skulls with Seth. Just because I want to talk about what this species has meant for our development and evolution. So while I talk, I'll just give a close look at this specimen. You'll notice that it looks, unlike any of the skulls that I've done so far, extremely human. It's much larger in brain volume than any skull that I've shown so far. It has a body type that we haven't seen before. Instead of being more, say, ape-like, this hominin was the first that went on the scale, you know, the sliding scale of hominin, ape, hominid. It is definitely more on the human side. In fact, this is one of the first hominins that we can designate, many people designate as human. This was... The first hominin that stood upright completely in a posture similar to modern humans. Meaning they stood up straight, they stood on two legs, they had the ability to run, which was new to hominins. Of course, walking was a massive adaptation on two legs, so running became something that they were able to do that completely changed everything about the way we did things. We went from scavengers who could only find what was on the savannas and eat and cut them up to actually being able to hunt. And we know Homo erectus was actively hunting and gathering meat and had a very large meat diet. And what happened was because of the amount of meat and protein that these hominins were eating, their guts actually shrunk because there didn't need to be as much to digest the more fibrous plant material and meat is easier to digest. So their guts shrunk and because of that, their heads were able to expand, their brain size, the cc's expanded and we know that this is a pretty good correlation on what happens. It's estimated that 
as an adult because this is actually the skull of an eight to nine year old would have been around 909 cc's if he had been an adult he had died with his brain being around 880 cubic centimeters so nowhere near the 1250 for an average homo sapiens but so much higher than the 400s that we see with Homo habilis and the Australopithecines and Homo naledi, etc. Uh, but as we have discussed recently, does brain size really correlate with intelligence or their social cultural abilities? I don't think so. And I think soon we're going to see a wave of people discussing and realizing and talking about how it's more about the organization of the brain and how it's configured rather than the size of it. We already know that the fissures and how many of them exist, which are the grooves in the brain, makes an animal more intelligent than just the size of the brain. But that's a whole different topic we can talk about later. Homo erectus, though, big brain for the first time. And if we look at the canines, we can see that they are almost non-existent. They are very small, which means, of course, they were using tools instead of their bodies to go hunting, to gather food, and to do such things. A bit prognathic still. Of course, that's how far the face is from the base of the skull. And... It's so pretty prognathic, we'll see a great reduction in that once we go down the evolutionary stream. Now, when he was eight or nine years old, he was five feet three inches tall and weighed 106 pounds. That's a big eight to nine year old. So these guys were big especially for their time, who they were, and we've learned a lot about hominin aging from childhood to adulthood because of Trichonoboy and Homo erectus. We've learned whether or not it's more like apes, more like humans, when did they cross over. We've been able to determine a lot based on how old Trichonoboy was and in his growth patterns. His two molars have erupted, but his third molars, his wisdom teeth, have not. And that was one of the ways they determined his age. Um, he also had severe disability where it hindered his movements in his long legs and shoulders because of the hot and dry climate. He probably just died because he had a subtle curvature in his spine that slowed his movements and with the climate and not finding food he just wasn't fit so this specimen died by the river under a tree or what would become a tree i should say and he they found him skull first, literally just in the ground like this, with his body underneath. We have almost 40% of this skeleton, which at this time, unless Homo naledi has changed this, which I'm not sure about, but before Homo naledi at least, Homo erectus is the most complete hominin skeleton we have ever found. Turcana boy. Lucy? Fragments. Everyone thinks Lucy is a full skeleton. Lucy is fragments. Most of it is composite that we have figured out what to do with. But Turcana boy, 40% of his remains were found. And that is extremely rare and important and a gold mine of research and information that, again, has been determined from these remains. Now, to talk more about Homo erectus in general, because, again, this species is just so enigmatic and important, 
They were the first hominin species to leave Africa around 2 million years ago. Um, we first see them in Europe in um, Dominici, Georgia, where they're actually disputable, the remains. Some of them look like Homo erectus. Some of them look a little different. At one point, they were designated as Homo georgicus, and some still deem them that because they do seem different than Homo erectus. They seem more adapted to a colder climate, but we have lumped them together thus far. But they, we have found them in Java hundreds of years ago. They've been found all over the old world except in Europe, um, past Dominici. And they literally were probably sailing to islands. We believe they had that ability. So these were smart creatures. And whether it was the size of their brain or the way it was organized, there was a change in Homo erectus that made a big difference in our ongoing evolution and development and we know that homo erectus plays an important role in our braided stream of evolution because he comes in he comes out we might even have there's this ghost dna that we don't know where it belongs to in Africa, it could be Homo naledi, it could be Homo erectus, it could be an unknown, we're not sure. But, here he is. Let's get a good look at him again. Let the camera focus. If I move my head. So, Homo erectus, also known as Homo ergaster in Africa. Outside of Africa, it's always known as Homo erectus. Some people just call them Homo erectus all the time, which I prefer. I don't see a reason to deem them something else just because of their location, if they're the same animal. Um, and another interesting thing about this species is, if you know of the hobbits, Homo florensiensis, it's believed that Homo erectus got to Flores, again, sailing or island hopping, and became stranded. And because of island isolationism and the way that that works, small animals get big, big animals get small, Homo erectus is what we believe shrunk down to become Homo florensiensis through these extreme pressures of their new island habitat. So much to talk about when it comes to this species. But we're almost at 15 minutes making this the longest Skulls with Seth episode, so I think we will cut it off there. But I highly encourage you all to look up Homo erectus and Turkana boy, and please do look at those Kamoya Kimu tributes because he, his impact on the field of paleoanthropology is probably not going to be seen the like of again, at least not, of course, in the same way. And I think that does it. So. Have a great one. Hope you learned something new. If you did, please like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, please comment them and I will get back to you as fast as I can. I love reading comments. I read them all and I'll respond. So just leave them in the comments below. If you see that store right below the video, right down there, there's some awesome shirts that I've drawn and other merchandise that I'm trying to use to get more skulls because i can't make these videos without skulls so problem so thank you so much and all the time i am so appreciative of all the support that all of you guys give me um have a great weekend